Is it cheating to use 3D modeling in your artwork, especially if you trace over it? Does the fact that you use 3D modeling mean that you don't need to know anatomy and other artistic skills? Like, program just does everything for you? There's so much controversy around 3D modeling in the artistic circles, still, unfortunately. And I will try to shed some light on some of those topics, especially on how do you use 3D in a right way? And there's no right way. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use clip to do paint 3D models and how to make them look really good. So they don't look stiff, doll-like, nobody actually recognizes that you've been using them. And if that's cheating, then well, that's what it is. Hello and welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jan Thessalots and I'm your self-taught artist became professional art buddy. Actually, this is the first video that I'm making with my face. If you've been following me for quite a while, you know that I've been mostly doing videos with only my voice or my hands. And I'm extremely anxious because I'm trans mask. Uh, my pronoun is he, him, but I, I don't, obviously I don't pass. So it's the question of how uh, my audience is going to perceive me. Of course, I won't lie that it kind of feels a little bit nervous. But I really hope that you will support me, guys. And uh, okay, let's be done with this, you know, awkward stuff. And let's move on to the actual video. This is a 3D guy. Let's name him Joe. And uh, he's going to show you how I pose characters so those poses look dynamic and real. Be sure to watch this video till the end to know the in-depth tips and tricks of how I'm using 3D models and clip to do paint and to finally know whether using 3D models is good or bad for you. And before we start, please don't forget to like this video to help my channel grow, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss my new videos. First, let me walk you through the basics of how 3D models works in Clip Studio Paint. You can find the basic human figures here. They will install automatically when you first purchase the app. If you drag and drop it into your canvas, it will automatically create a new 3D layer with the figure already in it. Always be sure that 3D mode is on, the object mode. You can toggle it here. If you double click on the figure, you will see this sphere, which has a lot of functionality. The large Auto sphere that turns orange when you toggle it is the scaling of your model. The purple dots are the key points of the model's body that you can drag and it will move along quite organically. I will show you later how it works. The arrows allow you to move the models according to the axes. The smaller spheres allow you to rotate the model in various directions. While rotating the model, you can see a perspective box, which is very handy if you need to place your model in a specific 2D environment's perspective. If you mood your model and want to make sure that it stands on the surface and not above or below it, you can press this button and it will automatically put your model on top of the surface. The female figure is also available in the basic 3D pack that you get with the app. I'm using only the male one because that's the subject of my artwork. The basic figures are really great and they're customizable in terms of body shape, but when it comes to male figures, I prefer to work with this free asset I found on the assets section. You can find the link in the video description. To move the character according to the camera view, you can use this button here, it's, it's really very handy. As you can see, I already have a background, which I need to inhabit with my characters. There will be two men walking together, so I drag the model two times. As it loads, we can see that it even has a shadow, which is also kind of useful. I will get into more details of the lighting a bit further in the video. At first, I'm making my character the same size. The magnet featured here helps me place them right beside one another and make them the similar in size quite easily. At this stage, avoid using your mouse wheel because it alters the lens of the camera and the perspective you get, uh, and we don't need that right now. Okay, now I want to customize the body shapes of my characters, so one is taller and has wider shoulders, but more lean body, while the other is shorter and a bit more stocky. To customize a character's body type, you need to press this button here and you will get to see this menu. If you click on this panel, you will get to the main customization window. Moving this slider will change the whole body type of the character. This field has four main axes, which make your character's body more muscular, non-muscular, more fat and thin. Play around to see how moving around those axes alters your character looks. You can really achieve numerous variations. 
you can make them muscular and fat or thin and non-muscular or thin and muscular or any variations in between. If you toggle head to body ratio, you will get weird results, which might be good for some extreme anatomy though, like when you create some uh, non-human characters or babies as well. <laughs> Not that babies are non-human, they're just little humans, but okay. But we need to keep the box empty so the head stays in proportions with the height. I choose the preferred height for my characters so I can see their height different from the start. If you click on the head, you can play with the head's parameters. By clicking on the torso section, you can toggle it too. It works a bit differently than the whole body slider though. It, it doesn't make the torso more lean or muscular or fat, but it varies its length and width in proportion with the whole body. That's actually the main disadvantage this model has in comparison to the default Clip Studio model. I will show it to you. If you look at the default model settings, you can toggle the proportion much more since you can change the shoulder and hip ratio. It makes more room to customize body morphs, but I still prefer this model more. It just feels, I don't know, more organic to me. I also adjust the length of the legs, since I want this character not only to be generally taller, but have longer legs in comparison to his torso. Those slight details in body proportions are very important when you want to create different body types. I'm making the second character a bit stockier and his left torso ratio is smaller and it creates the variety in their body types. Now I'm adjusting the size of my figures so they fit the idea and the general composition of my background. Their height needs to be in proportion to the objects near which I plan to place them. Then I toggle the angle of the perspective with this button, so the lines of the perspective grid would align with the lines of the background drawings. Thankfully, I've got a very simple one-point perspective here and it's easy to adjust the figures to it. While you're watching me pose the characters, let me break it down to you what's important to take in consideration when you do that. First of all, you should have reference. Yes, you need reference for creating 3D reference. Unless you're very used and skilled at drawing human in dynamic from life, your visual library of how people walk, sit, run, hold objects, etc. is pretty limited and abstract. You probably have some ideas about how people do that, but uh, eventually you will learn that they're not enough. This is one of the most common mistakes that eventually give away the lack of knowledge in anatomy and gesture. Without studying reference and dynamic poses, you end up with the stiff gestures and your characters look just way too doll-like. One of the key things about realistic posing is asymmetry. People are not symmetrical, especially when they're moving actively. My characters are walking and I need to distribute their body weight through their poses so they look dynamic and real. To do so, I vary the inclination angle of the shoulders and hips, as well as the rotation of the pelvis and upper ribcage in the contraposition to one another, as shown here, and it indicates that they are balancing themselves while walking. Also, I want the taller character to move with wider gestures, and the way he carries himself um, should have a more straight posture, at least something here is straight, while the other one tends to stoop a bit, but is more chill and kind of relaxed. Through this, I show the difference between those characters, their body language, their movement patterns. Also, I create variety that helps the audience to see the image as realistic, because people have same movement patterns only if they do professional dancing shows or army parades, where it's clearly artificial. As you can see here, if you drag your character by the active points, those purple dots become orange and you can sort of puppet move them like a puppeteer. And it can help you with getting more dynamic poses if you play with this feature. It's really kind of handy. For example, I made the character lean slightly towards the second character and toggle the tilt of his pelvis to create a power gesture line based on his pelvis, like he's moving, walking from his pelvis. You can immediately see how different are the postures of the characters and that adds realism and emotional interaction to the scene. Okay, now we're going to talk about the lighting. I can't say that the lighting options in Clip 2D Paint are like super cool, but we can really achieve something with that and that will help you greatly with your drawing. To toggle the light settings, you need to go to the character setting window, then press object list and allocate. Here you will find the lighting settings. We have 
two light sources that you can customize according to intensity and color. And also diffuse light setting, which doesn't really work much for me, so I barely use it ever. By moving your cursor over the sphere, you can play with the light direction and it will affect the shadows as well. To change the way the light looks on your models, you need to go to Preferences, Render Settings, and here you can choose how the light works. I changed the Tune version because it helps me to simplify the shadows of the boards. When I'm almost done with the posing, I will use the mouse wheel I told you about in the beginning of the video uh, to toggle the camera angle a bit and add more kind of dynamic perspective and manga perspective. Uh, it creates sort of a lens dynamic to the characters. To do that, uh, you need to have your manga perspective box to be checked here in the tool property window. Now we're going to talk about my nemesis. It's the shoes. To me, drawing shoes was always a pain, so I use a couple of free models, links below as usual, to help me with that. Of course, sometimes I need to alter them significantly to match the style that my characters need, but they still work perfectly as a base. To do that, you need to place the shoes models in the same 3D space as your characters. Uh, don't forget to drag the model into the exact layer where your previous models are. And then literally put them on your characters, adjusting the position, size, all of the angles, and it might be a bit tricky. Don't forget to constantly rotate your 3D scene to see if everything is in the right place, because sometimes it really gets weird. And now as you watch me finalize the posing, I want to talk a little bit about the subject of cheating. Those who say that using 3D is cheating simply don't understand the fact that 3D models are a tool and you still need many artistic skills to make it work. You've got to know gesture, composition, understand how muscles work, since most 3D models are far from perfect and they don't really work well with muscle contractions, stretching and squishing of flesh, etc. You need to know where you can follow the model's anatomy and where you have to alter it. For example, the position of fingers is very far from real, so you, if you just trace over it, it won't look really good in the end. Also, when drawing clothes, you need to understand how to construct them how to show the fabrics through the line weight. After all, even when using the 3D base, the facial expressions of your characters, as well as the overall looks and character design, are only as good as your knowledge of anatomy and drawing emotions, hair, different face structures and types. 3D models are great help. Artists use tools to simplify their work from the beginning of art itself. If you study history, you will know. You really don't have to draw a very complex perspective and architecture by hand if it's only a background and you specialize in characters. I definitely wouldn't rely on 3D only, even if it's very realistic, like Das 3, for example, which I also use. I still would recommend studying gesture drawing and anatomy if your goal is a professional art career. If it's a hobby, you can just do whatever you want, don't listen to anyone. But if you're making art as a career, 3D models can make your work so much faster and speed is crucial in the art business. But you must keep in mind that 3D models won't make your characters charismatic, your designs interesting and the poses real and dynamic. In my next video, I'm going to show you how exactly I sketched over this finished 3D scene and how I turned it into a finished illustration. Be sure to subscribe not to miss that. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.